Hey, man. Man. I think we ought to just stop and shout a minute and praise the Lord. Give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Praise him tonight, church. Oh, we can do better than that. I've heard some of our people yell at each other louder than that. Let me tell you something tonight. We're not talking about a ball game or a car race. We're talking about the king of glory that loves you and I tonight. Hallelujah. Woo! Man. Golly, I was hoping for Bill to get saved. I might get saved myself. Hallelujah. Woo! Man, it's been good. It's been good. It's been good. I want to thank everybody tonight. I am so thankful for the privilege. I thank the Lord for the privilege to have been in this meeting. I agree with my friend, Brother Earl, my mentor, Brother Earl. I, I'm just tickled to death to have had a part in this meeting. And uh, it has been awesome. And uh, now, I told you last night I was going to tell you something. And I'm going to tell you this, and then we're going to get into the message. God's been dealing with my heart for this for a long time. I've got some air folks back here tonight that, are, that have been faithful of being here Chip, I don't even like Chip, but I love him. No, I, no, I love Chip. He's my buddy. And uh, God's been dealing with my heart for a long time. I've been pastoring. I told you last night. In the 27 years this year, been preaching for over 30 since God called us when we were 17 years old. And uh, God's been leading me toward evangelistic work for a long time. But the work is a little bit different. What He's leading us toward to do. We've seen God use the television ministry to reach out. To reach a lot of folks. Here's what God's laid on their heart. And I'm telling you this because I want you to pray about it. I said this to Glory at the end of the service Sunday. Okay. I'm not leaving Glory right now. Okay. I'm, I'm pastoring that church right now. Is where I believe the Lord wants me to be. I don't know what God has in store for the future. But this is what he's laying on our heart. He's laying on our heart to go to the local church. And, and, and if God will allow us to do it. And these pastors will allow us to come in. We're going to bring in camera. And we're going to film revival services in the local churches and pray to God as they break out. And then we're going to turn around and put those on a brand new television ministry. Okay? And we're going to air a night of that revival from these different churches. And then at the conclusion of those messages, then we're going to have the local pastor of that church come on and share for the last few minutes a little bit about the ministry of that church and where that church is located and, and what God's doing there and what they've got to offer for, toward the kingdom of God. Now that's what we feel the Lord leading us to do. Okay, So I'm, I'm saying that tonight to ask you, would you pray for us? And uh, this is a praying church, brother. I'm telling you it is. And, uh, and I, I want you to pray for us, glory to God. Lift that up before the Lord. Now look, I'm not in this work and even the television part because of my dashing good looks. Why'd y'all laugh? <laughs> and it's not even because the resemblance of the body of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay? That's not why we're in this. We're in this for one total reason. To get out the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world because He is the only way and He's the only chance that America has tonight and He's the only chance that any individual has tonight for missing a devil's hell. So would you pray about that with us? We would greatly appreciate that. I want to say, Brother Earl, you have blessed my heart, brother, this week. I have loved Brother Earl for years, and I, I've, I'll tell you something. I have had a blast. Now, look, I know there's a more spiritual evangelical way to say this. Man, I've had a blast with Earl this week. <laughs> Golly, Earl's made me laugh. I heard him sing. He's made me cry. <laughs> he, he's picked up my spirit. Listen, we've ate together. We've almost swam together. We've had a time. We almost died together one afternoon. Glory to God. I love you, brother. I love you. And I, Bill, what can I say about Bill? Bill's mom is here tonight. It is an honor to meet you. It is an honor. My mama taught me years ago. She said, if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing. All right, let's get in the Bible. Now, I... <laughs> Bill, I love you, buddy. I really do. I, I love Bill. You guys don't need me to tell you this. You have a good pastor. 
Okay, that is a man of God sitting right there. There's no doubt in my mind, hallelujah. <laughs> Let me ask you to do something just before we preach tonight. I, I do this at the conclusion of this service. And, and, and my folks do this to me a lot of times. I, 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 somebody asked me, you ever think of quitting? Yep, just about time every Monday. <laughs> you have a good service and God will bless and souls will get saved and the Spirit of God will pour out and then you'll get a call Monday morning and people will say something like this. Preacher, I tell you one thing, I love you and I love a church. But I hate them buts. So what are you doing, preacher? I'm putting that in my pocket. I'm not going to preach long, just till I get done. Honest to God, folk. <laughs> but do this. Go up to this pastor. Go up to this pastor, even tonight, and tell him that you love him. And tell him that you're praying for him. Because I'm going to tell you something. It means something when folks come up to you and tell you that they love you and appreciate you in the Lord. Some folks I never hear from unless they got a bellyache. Some folks I never hear from unless somebody's looked at them cross-eyed or something. I had one tell me a while back, somebody looked at me funny, and I said, have you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> you look funny. <laughs> they hadn't been back yet, but I'm sure they will. And uh, Everybody stand up with us, if you will. We're going to reverence the reading of the Word of God. Last message for the week, and I'm just being honest. I put this off because I don't want to go home. Brother Earl knows what I'm talking about. We don't want to leave. And uh, look here, if, you, if, if y'all just call us as the co-pastors to this pastor here, and uh, we'll just stay and do it again next week. Hallelujah. How about that? No, it's been good. It's been good. Tonight, turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3. 2 Timothy, chapter 3. I've been hearing folks make the statement that we're living in, 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 in hard times, in difficult times. I've been hearing people say we're living in strange times because something's about to happen. Let me tell you something. You better know something's about to happen. Hey, let me tell you, the glory of God has come down this week in this meeting. But I'm going to tell you something. Something even bigger is getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. Something's getting ready to happen. I, I can tell you this. Even the person that's never known anything about the things of God, never read anything out of the Word of God, never been into a church service such as we've had this week, and some of them will even acknowledge something's about to happen. Yes. Something's about to happen. Well, I, I want to get into the Word of God for a few moments tonight and, and, and stand there with me for just a few moments. Now, if you have a hard time standing, sit down. <laughs> if you don't have a hard time standing and you sit down, I pray your pew will break. All right, look here. <laughs> Honest to God, let me tell you this real quick. This is free. We tell our church on Sunday mornings that there are folks that are there, and we thank God for them. There are some that are missing because some of them are traveling. And my folks, my God, some of them are traveling all the time. Okay. Nothing else, they ride back and forth in front of the church. What's going on? But they're traveling, okay? And then some of our folks ain't there because they're sick. And I tell them, some of them ain't there because they're lazy. Now, if they're traveling, we ask them to be prayed for. If they're sick, we ask them to be prayed for. If they're lazy, we pray that the bed will totally fall. I had a lady come in church a while back and look at me, walk right up to me one Sunday morning and said, It's your fault! I said, why? She said, I skipped church last Sunday, didn't feel like getting up. Got up, went to the bathroom, come back, and the whole bed fell. <laughs> I said, hallelujah. All right, let's look into the Word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Paul, the apostle, speaking to young Timothy through the leadership of God the Holy Ghost, a young preacher in the faith, this young Timothy. Paul said, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now that word means dangerous. It's going to be a dangerous time to be in in the last days before the Lord calls us out. Now, what, what, what's it going to be like? Look at verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. You know what it's going to be like in the last days before the Lord comes back? Everybody's going to be worried about number one. And they're going to tell you, I ain't worried about nobody else. I'm worried about number one. We there today. Look on at verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Wanting what somebody else has got. Look on boasters bragging about what we do have and what we have done. Look on proud. 
There'll be folks in the last days walking around with their nose so high up in there. If it rains, they'll drown. Well, they're blasphemers. And that doesn't just mean cursing and taking God's name in vain. But it also carries with it taking credit for something God's done. Look on. He said, disobedient to parents. Now, we're not there yet. That is coming, though. You mark it down. <laughs> I told our church a while back I was at Dairy Queen there in town. And there was a lady standing there, bless her heart. And she had two little ones. And the little boy was a little bit older than the little girl. And the little boy was standing there patient. And the little girl was going, ah, ah, she was screaming. I'd never seen a conniption until then. Until the other day when Earl was trying to climb out that car window when he was about to hit the car in the back. You know, but anyway, that child screaming. And after a while, it turned around and the little girl started hitting on her brother and smacking on him. And then the mama said, please stop, honey. And then she smacked on her mama and bit on her. She looked at me and I said, I don't know you, child. There's no connection. You don't want to hit me. Disobedient to parents. We've got children today running some home. Bible said it was going to be that way. Look on. Unthankful. The more we get, the more we want, and the less thankful we are. Unholy, which carries with it without perfection of God. Verse 3, without natural affection. I get hate mail for this. I get threats for this. When I first met my wife years ago, she was, she's a deacon's daughter. I was pastoring the first church and, 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 and I was visiting with another deacon of the church and this family had gotten out of church. And we were there and I was talking to this deacon and his wife and the other deacon with me and we discussing things and all of a sudden this cute little blonde stuck her head around the door and she pulled it back. I looked at her and grinned. I've heard men say, I married my woman because of her superior intellect. I didn't know if she could talk. I knew she was cute, glory to God. I've told this before. Her daddy could have looked at me and said, we're going to blow the church up. That's good. <laughs> I was looking to see her peek back. I was attracted to her because I was a male and she was a female. That's natural. Unnatural affection is for two men to look at each other and go, whoa, baby, that's not right. That's not of God. And it is wrong, glory to God. Bible said it was going to be that way in the last days, though. What does it say? Without natural affection. Without natural... Look on. Truth breakers, false accusers. My daddy taught me years ago that when a man shook your hand or you shook his hand, you were giving him your word. Now you got to have a lawyer. And you better have a lawyer for that lawyer or he'll get you. Look on. Bible says incontinent. You know what it means to be incontinent? Without self-control. If, if somebody in the last days goes off, starts cussing, hollering and ramping and raving, tells somebody off, and then comes back and goes, I'm sorry, that's just how I am. They're incontinent. The word of God's being fulfilled. That's where all this road rage and mess is coming from. Except when Bill's driving. Look on, fierce. <laughs> Despises of those that are good. Look at verse 4. Traitors, headedly, high-minded. In other words, thinking more of ourselves than we are the things of God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Look at verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. From such turn away. In other words, the Bible said in the last days, there are going to be religious people around. Brother Earl just talked about it. There are going to be religious acting people around. We got more churches per capita and more denominations in the United States of America right now than we've ever had. Yet we're more wicked and more away from God than we've ever been before. What's wrong, preacher? I tell you what's wrong. Number one, we're denying the power of Almighty God. And number two, the Lord's getting ready to come back and call His people out of here. And He's trying to tell us He's on the way. He's on the way, glory to God. Now, with that being said, and if we can all agree we're living in these days, how do we survive in days like this? <laughs> I'm going to let you sit down in a second. Hold on. <laughs> Brother Earl and me were talking about in the back seat of the car. He's even about guns. I am a proud gun owner. You don't believe that? Come in my house in the middle of the night and don't knock on the door. 
Well, preacher, you would talk to me. <laughs> the gun going to do the talking. Amen or oh me? But to survive in days like this, it's going to take more than guns. It's going to take more than police officers. It's going to take more than military. Hallelujah. We better be doing what the Word of God says and getting closer to Almighty God if we'll survive in days like this. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, one more time this week, God, we ask you to anoint and bless. Thank you, Father, for what you've done. Thank you for the souls that have been saved already tonight. And fathers, we preach for just a few moments. God, anoint us with your sweet Holy Ghost. Fill us up, Lord. God, tonight, if there's one here still that doesn't know you, save your Save them. Strengthen the child of God. Thank you for the revival you have sent this way this week. That God may it spark and go across the land. Have your way now and have your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. For a few moments tonight, keep your, keep your Bible nearby, and we're going to deal with just for a few moments on what we're going to have to do or what we're going to need to survive in times like these. Folks, we're living in different times from what our grandparents did. We're living in different times from what some of our own parents have ever lived in. There are things happening right now around the world and in these United States of America that even some of our people who are older in years will tell you, we never thought we'd see this happen. Now, it ought not be a time that scares us. I've got a retired pastor in our church that moved into the area from out of Florida several years ago. Dear, dear man of God, loves to talk Bible. I'll go by his house every now and then, and I, I, I can't go often because I can't get away. And we'll talk about the Word of God, and he's got a $64 million smile. And he'll look at me, and he'll, he'll, he'll get to waving that arm way Brother Earl does sometimes. He'll say, you know, preacher, I ought to be scared the way that things are happening. He said, but I'm not scared. I'm excited to be living in these days the way things are happening. Because he said, I'm looking for the eastern sky to split any time and the Lord to come and call us out. Amen. Woo! What should we be doing in the meantime? Number one, in days like this, to be able to survive, one needs to be saved from sin. One needs to be saved from sin. Listen to me tonight, folks. I believe that the Word of God teaches in Acts chapter 4, verse number 12, that there's salvation in no other name except the name of Jesus Christ. We better be saved from sin tonight. Folks, let me tell you something. It's not going to be guns, and it's not going to be religion, and it's not going to be denominations that's going to get us through, but it's going to be the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I was riding down the road the other day. My wife called me this evening. I call my wife every night when I'm gone. You say, why? I love her. And it's cheaper than alimony. Say amen right there. <laughs> she said this evening, are you leaving your coat on? <laughs> I said, yeah, baby. <laughs> We're all family, right? I was riding down the road the other day and heard some bird on the radio talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he was preaching good till he got to this point. And he said, I'll tell you all something. He said, I would love to tell you the gospel of Jesus. And I'd love to tell you how to get saved. But I only had 30 minutes. And you can't do it in 30 minutes. Give me about two minutes. Give me about two. I think that bird enjoyed hearing himself talk. God's most prized possession, man, fell through Adam. After Adam fell, along with Eve, the Bible declared that they become a sin barrier in between a holy God and man, his most prized possession. See, a holy God can't work on sin. So God allowed artificial sacrifices to be made. What do you mean artificial sacrifices? Bible declares in the book of Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Something or someone has to die, and sin has to be what covers that blood. But it was only temporary. The blood began to flow in the Old Testament temples, but it didn't last. 
God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. The Bible teaches in John 3, 16, he came down, born of a virgin mama. Why? Because he didn't have the blood flowing through his veins that was coming from mortal man. The blood that was flowing through his veins was coming from the Father above, which was sinless blood. He grew up. He preached. He taught about the kingdom of God. And then he stretched out his arms, died on an old rugged cross, became our supreme sacrifice, walked out of the tomb three days later, defeated death, hell, and the grave. There's the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's the gospel. Glory to God. This crowd will run around and tell you, you can't get God in one message. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. It's a simple message. God loved us. Jesus died for us. And he'll save us if we'll trust him. To survive in days like these, I better know that I know that I know that I've been saved. Well, preacher, I've joined 12 churches. I'm finding the perfect one. Good luck! (laughs) This one's pretty close. (laughs) But Pastor Bill's a member. (laughs) There's some people running around today saying, Preacher, I was baptized until I'm shriveled up. Won't save you. It won't save you. There are people running around today saying, I've done this and I've done the other. Honey, listen to me. To survive in days like these, I better know that I've been blood washed, that I've trusted Jesus, and that I'm born again into the family of God. Give him a hand of praise. Glory to God. Number two, to survive in days like these, I better not be just Knowing I'm saved from sin, but number two, I better be separated unto the scriptures. Here's the way that Paul told Timothy earlier in the book. In 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved. You know why Christians are running around day in these last days going, I don't know what's happening. I don't understand. They go to church one day and the next day they're telling everybody on the job, I don't know what you're going to do. You know what's wrong with us? We know about more what's on the internet than we knew about what's in the Word of God. Some of us know more about what's coming on television tonight than we knew about what's in the Word of God. Some of us know more about who's winning dancing with the stars <laughs> than we know about what the Bible says is taking place. Honey, let me tell you something. I believe if we're going to survive in days like these, we better know that we're saved from sin. And then we better know that we've been separated aside unto the Scriptures. We better get into the book. And don't let the devil lie to you. You can't understand it. He'll whisper something like, you don't know the thou's and the these and what it's talking about. Close it and go, he's right. You know what you're missing out on by listening to the lies of the devil? You're missing out on what God's already done to generations before us. You're missing out on how God has delivered those that needed deliverance. You know what you're missing out on? You're missing out on what he's doing right now. And you're missing out on what he's about to do. And what's about to happen to this old world. And the battle that's about to come. You're missing it if you don't get into the book. And I'm telling you, if we're going to survive in these days, we better know we're saved. and We better be separated unto the scriptures. The devil throws little excuses. I ain't got time to read the Bible. <laughs> Most of you look like me. You got time to eat. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Now, I ain't talking about all of you. J.R., you look like me. You ain't eight in weeks, brother. Bless your heart. <laughs> Lord, let me lay the Bible down when I'm lying. Glory to God. Listen. I love you, brother. I'm just picking. Listen. If we're going to survive in these days, we better be separated unto the Scriptures. We better know what the Word of God says. And then let me give you this one. Woo, brother Earl hit it. 
To survive in days like these, one must be saved from sin, separated unto the scriptures, <laughs> and one must be saturated with the Spirit of God. Yes. Saturated! Now, preacher, be careful. We are Baptists, see? We talked about this a minute the other night. We don't want people to think that we're Pentecostal holiness. We family. Can we talk a minute? <laughs> there are some Pentecostal people who don't like me. Some do. There are some Methodist people who don't like me. Some do. There are some Baptists that don't like me. And I know you're thinking, I'm, I'm sitting here tonight. I'm one of them. Maybe you are. <laughs> Listen to me, though, on the authority of the Word of God. We better be totally filled. We better be totally saturated. We better be totally indoctrinated with the Holy Ghost of God. We better walk with Him, talk with Him, go to work with Him, go to school with Him, be with Him at all times, and let Him be having His will and His way in our lives. Glory to God. Give him a hand of praise, church. Glory to God. Now, when you saturate it with the Spirit, he'll make you act funny sometimes. He'll make you shout. He'll make you, well, there you go. He'll make you move. Woo! I had one tell me one time, preacher, he thought he was being sarcastic. He wasn't being sarcastic. He looked at me and he said, I would get saved. He told me at the door on Sunday he was visiting glory. He said, but I might act like you. I said, you get saved, you might act wilder than I do. Say amen right there. Hey, let me tell you something. To survive in these days, we need to be saturated, totally covered up, totally filled with the Spirit of God. Oh, but preacher... They go think I'm strange. That's what the book says. See, if you were reading the book, you'd already know that. The Bible says that you are strange people. You are peculiar. I know some of you, you fit that bill good. Hallelujah. The book says we're going to be strange and be peculiar. Y'all right. looking at me thinking I'm unusual. I'm just saying, filled with the Spirit of God, ready to go to heaven, glory to God, and not going to sit around and worry about things because the Lord's in control. He's taking care of things. He knows what's happening, and he knows what's about to happen. Give him a hand of praise right there. Woo! Woo. Listen. Glory to God, we're on holy ground. Hallelujah. To survive in days like these, I better be saturated with the Spirit. I better be separated unto the Scriptures. I better know that I'm saved from sin. And number four, one must be set upon Jesus and His coming. What are you talking about? Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Go back a little bit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Praise God. Look at verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And Bill, I apologize, brother. I broke your rule. You told me not to take nothing else off. <laughs> I'm sorry. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. We better be set upon Jesus and his coming tonight in these days. Look at verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a what? That, a shout. Look on with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yeah. Honey, we need to stop worrying about what the news has got to say. We need to start. I'm going to get in trouble here. Oh, God help me. 
I don't preach politics. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, or dog catcher. But I get so tired of turning on the news and seeing the president's face. It makes me angry. I'm like, I don't want to see you. I want to hear about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and Jesus splitting the eastern sky and coming back. Hallelujah. You listen to the news enough, you get depressed. You watch what them birds are talking about. They say, gas could be $7 a gallon by the end of the summer driving season. And we're sitting at home going, <laughs> and you know we do it. I keep hearing them talking about groceries going up. It ain't bothered me none until I went to the grocery store the other day. <laughs> See, me and Renita don't, honest to God, with her schedule and mine, we don't get to eat home together a lot. But I love hamburger. Brother, I am USDA government inspected beef. <laughs> and proud of it. There's been a menu cow into the ministry right there. Hallelujah. My $4 pack of hamburger that I get sometimes and throw on the grill when I get home is six fifty now. I walked by and picked it up and said, okay, six fifty. Six fifty! It's been four dollars. Cows ain't grown that much. <laughs> Get your focus on the world and on the news, and it'll run you crazy. It'll run you crazy. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> oh Lord, I should say that. Well, he we laid it on my heart. Here we go. I have visited the mental institutions a time or two in my life. You say, as a patient, that ain't none of your business. <laughs> but I've visited those institutions a time or two. There's some poor folks sitting around in those buildings and going, oh, things are so bad. Oh, things, there's no hope. Oh, things aren't going to get any better. Honey, if you sit around and listen to the media and the news, you're going to feel the same way. But if you want to survive as a child of God in days like this, get into the book. Make sure that you're saved. Be filled with the Spirit and get your focus on watching the eastern sky and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords coming back. Hallelujah. I was sitting in my office some time ago. I was sitting in my office some time ago. We had a, we had a, a funeral. I mean, a wedding getting ready to take place. <laughs> Sometimes there's a lot of similarities, amen, or old man. And I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes I'd rather do a funeral. I ain't never had the person set up and complain about what I'd done. I was in my office one afternoon. And my office is right off the sanctuary there at Glory. And we had this couple was getting ready to get married. They were going to have a big wedding. And I knew they were coming later that afternoon. What I didn't know was they were going to have a trumpet player. <laughs> Honest to God, before God, I'm telling you the truth. I was studying that text right there. I was getting ready to preach on the rapture of the church that Sunday morning. And about the time I got into it good, that dude had snuck in the front door. Well, he didn't sneak. He didn't know I was in the office. I'd parked around the back. He come on up there, and he was practicing a little bit. And about the time I read it, he said, Da-da! <laughs> I, like, turned the desk off. I jumped up. <laughs> and I was like, Fred Shepard, I'm still here. <laughs> Honest before God that happened, I jumped up down. He did it again. Da da! <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> I ran to the door and threw it open. That poor fella like to swallow the mouthpiece because he didn't know I was back there. He might give me a corner! Honey, but let me tell you something. We would better know that we're saved tonight. We better know that we're born again tonight. We better know that if the trumpet sounds before the service ends, we'll go up, hallelujah. We won't be here. We'll be gone. We'll be gone, glory to God. Now, 
to survive in days like these. I'm going to leave you this story and I'm going to quit. Half of you went, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> to survive in days like these, I better be as close to the Lord as I can get every day. Every day. Anybody remember the scripture where old Peter, they were in the boat in the midst of the night and the early morning hours, Jesus come walking on the water. They said, it's a spirit, it's a ghost. And the Lord told them, it's me. And you criticize Peter, but he had enough sense to speak up and enough braveness to go, Lord, if it's you, let me come to you. And the Lord told him, come on. I can see Peter now. <laughs> he called me, boy. <laughs> Steps out of that boat, standing on top of that water, steps every foot out, got his eyes on Jesus. The Lord just standing there, and he starts toward him. <laughs> and a little bit of wind blows past his face, and he thinks, man can't do this. <laughs> and he looked down at his feet, bloop, there he went. <laughs> Take your eyes off of Jesus two seconds today, and you'll sink. Take your eyes off of him two seconds today and false doctrine will sneak in. Take your eyes off of him today two seconds and garbage will begin to come in and your heart and your mind will get messed up. Tonight, if I'm going to survive in days like these, I ask you this, are you safe? Are you safe? Well, preacher, I would hope so. Honey, you better know so. You know what the Bible teaches in 1 John? John said, my little children, these things I write unto you, get this, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. You can know. And if you're saved, are you set on the scriptures? Do you look more at the Bible than you do at the TV screen? Oh, my. Oh, my. Am I saturated with the Spirit or am I scared what people going to think? That worries me all the time, how people going to perceive me. I try to keep my clothes on. <laughs> I kicked off my shoes one time at Glory. Started down the aisle. One of my women on the back row said, come here, come here. I run back there and my two big toes were sticking out on each side. She said, don't do that again. Stop worrying about what people think and start keeping your eyes on the eastern sky. We've got one grave in the cemetery at Glory. Glory is almost seven years old. We've been in the building we're in now five years this December. We had one dear lady, one of our folks, went to be with the Lord this past January. She's buried out there. And one of these days, the way things act, it ain't going to be long. That grave's going to burst wide open. Wide open. Bow your heads with me, please. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm not going to lie to you folks. I have absolutely, positively had a ball tonight. Tonight, you can know about that ball I'm talking about if you're here. And if you're not saved, you get saved right now. Right now. Jesus Christ died on that cross for you as much as he did for me, a brother Earl, or brother Bill, or anybody else in here. And maybe you've been here about every night and you keep saying, one of these days I'm going to get saved. One of these days it's going to be too late. With heads bowed and eyes closed right now, two simple ways to know that you're saved. Number one, do you believe upon Jesus? Do you believe he's Messiah? Do you believe he died on that cross and came out of that tomb? If he didn't, he was the biggest fake the world's ever seen. But I got news for you. He's not a fake. How do you know that? Because I know what he's done in my heart and life. I know what he's done for my body when he delivered me from asthma years ago. Listen to me. Do you believe upon him? And number two, has there ever been a time you took your lips? You confessed your sins and you asked him to come into your heart. Preacher, I wouldn't know what to say. We're going to do it right now. Brother did it a moment ago. We're going to do it right now before we close again. Say, dear Lord Jesus, 
Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I do believe you died for me on that cross. I do believe three days later you come out of the grave for me. God, I repent of all my sins. Lord, would you come into my heart and would you save my soul? In Jesus' name, every head bowed, every eye closed. This is not for show. I'm not going to come and embarrass you. At glory, I tell our folks, ain't no camera going to hit you. That's not what this is for. If you're here tonight, and maybe you almost got saved in the first message, but you didn't. Right now, you uttered those words and you asked Jesus into your heart. Say, preacher, just pray for me. Ask him to save me. With every head bowed and eye closed, do it fast. It's not for show. Slip a hand up, break back down. Say, preacher, I ask him to save me. Is there one? Is there one? Hallelujah. I see that hand. Is there another? Is there another? Preacher, pray for me. I see that hand. Is there one more? Hallelujah. Well, preacher, it's late. Honey, you don't know how late it is. He could come before we get home tonight. Christian, you're here and you know you're saved. How many would be honest and say, Preacher, pray for me. In the days in which we're living, I get discouraged. I get disheartened. I get aggravated. I get frustrated. Pray I'll have a closer walk with him. Lift a hand. Glory to God. Glory to God. I see those hands all over this building. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for those two precious hands that just slipped up and back down, Lord, welcome them to the family. May God give them the grace and the strength to even step out tonight. Now, Father, I pray if there's still one here that still doesn't know that they're saved, God, would you draw them to this altar. Lord, we can't save them, but we'll point them toward the one that can. We recognize that. And Father, for every child of God, and Lord, I'm on top of that list. We know that we're saved, but God, sometimes the whole world does get us weary. And it does get us discouraged. Father, tonight I ask in the name of Jesus, would you bless. Give us a special anointing touch from you. Fill us up with the Holy Ghost of God. And Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, would you fill this altar with folks that are willing to come and let go and let God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.